I'm David from AFX and welcome to my live stream. Today we're going to be looking at uh, just starting something from scratch. Uh, we're going to be using something called Zebra HZ. This is uh, Hans Zimmer's signature. If you don't know the synth, it's called Zebra and he um, created a signature sound set for the film The Dark Knight Rises. So we'll be looking at some of those presets and uh, going through deciding on what to use and making something completely new. So I've got no idea what's going to happen. So let's start with uh, one of the presets called Batcavish Pluck. Okay, you may recognize this. If you know that movie, then the, uh, the score will be familiar. So have a listen. Let's drop it an octave. So, we can start with this, uh, but we need to change the notes. So let's go for, say, zero, say five, say zero, say two, then maybe zero, or keep it all on one note. Yes, that sounds good to me. Right, so we've got an idea. Let's uh, record this uh, cue base I'm using. So we'll hit. Do a few bars. up and um, make a loop maybe start this is in E so we're doing four bars of this from one two three four yes and I like to start on one because sometimes it takes a while to kick in with the so if you start on bar one you get a better sort of beginning, it's more cohesive and it's tighter. Do we like that? Yeah, why not? Copy, paste. I'm just going to select and then loop it there. I've set the um, shortcut keys so I can have a copy of this track but with no data. That's a really handy thing. So if I hit, I'll get another Zebra HZ. HZ, HZ, um, and then we can have a look at it and choose a, a different preset. So we've got plenty of presets. Um, let's have a look. Oh yes, nice ticking alarm clock sound. So let's add that. So let's record. Okay, great. That sounds good to me. Um, let's put that in bar two. I mean, after four bars, that can come in. That's what I mean. So I always put my drums in blue and... Uh, then I know what I'm looking at. If it's more synthy, it's that sort of colour, or red and drums are in blue. So it's, uh, we know what that does. We don't need to listen to that over and over. So we can go to 
this one. Just feel that it could be tuned a bit better. Go to the synth, see what we can do. That's something I can look at later. It'll do for now. Right, so let's copy that and find out what can go in there next. Do a right, let's have a look and see what could go in next. Um, have a look at the presets, have a scan through. Oh, uh, maybe. Interesting. Should we drop that in? Why not? Okay, let's drop that in. Filmic. So let's start, uh, copy these. So we have quite a few. Mm. Okay. And go. We don't need that really anymore. Have plenty to work with. Let's find something else. The easiest thing to do is to duplicate and then find let's have another sequence or something. Sometimes you have to be careful because you can change the sound that you had before. Um, was it this one? An eroding, an eroding something. An enoding, that was it. Right. An enoding. So make sure we hit the right track and then we can get it up. And have a look at the next preset. this. It's quite cool. Let's, let's use it. It's cool enough. Sounds nice down there, actually. Let's have that coming in about here, shall we? if I'm on the right track. So we can redo that and go here. Um, ready? Let's do it. That's all we need. Um, we can that. Copy that. Or 
a few bars. What I'd like to do is put my bass sounds, put the color as a brown color, so uh, I can see which my favorite colors have disappeared. Let's just choose something that's brownish. Ah, there we go. That's brown. It just helps me when I'm writing so I know what's bassy. <laughs> Probably sound good with a filter. Um, I could could go into uh, the zebra synth and tweak the filters here, but it's sometimes just quicker to put a filter in. So let's go to the in insert and let's insert the uh, Steinberg it's filter the dual filter I've got another screen next to me on the right hand side so a lot of these uh, windows are coming up over there that's why I keep stopping and pulling things from that side so here we go Choose a preset. If you've got Cubase, a good preset on this is uh, my one, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, hang on, any of them really. Let's just, uh, oh, that's it. Where you want your resonance to be. Let's move that, shall we? Right, so that's. Have the resonance peak here, and then. And the quickest way to filter is to go to. Um, Right click on position and show position automation track. I normally put these in red, although they do flick to other colors. But if I start in red, at least I know, and then I can see what I'm doing with the automation. So we're drawing, uh, a line just start there and then go there so we can have some automation so instant filter and this is a great filter so and with your filters it's good to put them um sort of in time with the music, but it doesn't have to go up and down rapidly. You just want it to rise slowly and then descend slowly. So yes, that's lovely. Look at that filter going up and down. Really nice. copy that it should copy the automation info and um, go up and down very good let's loop this section and then grab another instance of 
a dark zebra and make sure if they have the right track selected and then we'll get the software up it's here and go and have a look at the presets choose a new a new sound <laughs> The secret to uh, any great score is lots of layers. Uh, so let's put this in somewhere. Uh, let's put it here. Um, okay. Uh, take the loop off. Again, if I'm on the wrong track for recording, make sure you always pick your right track. Right, let's try again. Slightly out of time there. I'll uh, tweak it. Okay, let's put that more in time. And let's. I think the secret with writing music rapidly is not to keep listening to what you've previously done. We can quantize that to make sure it's in time. So that, that should be. Hello? Sorry, I dropped out there. <laughs> I must have... And yes, I'm soloing something and my mic channel's not uh, on solo defeat. Let me just have a look at the mic channel. And um, it shouldn't turn off when I solo, but uh, it is. Let's just see. <laughs> So, um, that's happening. Anyway, it's a minor thing. So what uh, I wanted to show you was how often these sort of sounds can be out of place. Uh, they, they appear out of place because they're too close. Um, so the best thing to do is to grab your EQ and go to either low or high cut, so you can cut the high frequencies. So we'll do a low pass, so the low frequencies are passed, and also we'll do a high pass, so the high frequencies can pass, and uh, we can have sort of something in the middle. We can even see what frequencies inherent in this sound and then we can we can tweak them so we can we can make it appear further away by lowering the high frequency and, and roaring off the, the top end let's do that I think I know why my mic's going off, actually. It's uh, something to do with the mix channel. I need to switch something. Bear with me. Mix channel. Uh, the mic channel needs the solo defeat. Okay, now. Here we 
this yes that's solved the problem i can solo things and still talk to you problem solved so with this one we can really kill the frequencies on it so we can have no low frequency and we can have it appear further away by rolling off the high frequencies Let's try that, shall we? Yes, that fits more into the genre. I think what you want to do is just be mixing as you go to... I like to hear the final product as soon as possible. So I'll start mixing straight away. Don't waste any time. And one of the major things you do when you mix is remove frequencies, such as those low and high ones. Happy with that? Let's go on to create another part. So we'll copy these parts. And uh, of course, it's all very rough here. Yeah, we can come in later and change the colors and, you know, make things look better. Let's choose another from the Dark Knight sound set and create something new. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so that was eighth primitive stomp. If we go into the presets and have a look at something else, how about error drone? Possibly a bit quiet. That's not too bad. Drones. And that's quite nice. That's a typical, typical score sort of sound. So let's put that in. It's uh, velocity sensitive, so if I hit the keyboard, you can hear me hitting the keyboard. Yes, that's better. Let's do this automatic Q plus. Let's bring it in with this. So let's go to that section and then hit record. Now we don't have to hold that down for forever. We can uh, copy that, of course. And make it the right length. I'll, I'll, I like to work. I'm not sure if you had other DAWs that, that you use. But um, I like the way you can kind of write on the screen as if it was a, a piece of manuscript paper. Sorry, I just kicked my mic then. So I like this uh, way of working rather than sort of having individual separate edit pages. If we do it all on one page, it's more cohesive. That just needs putting in time, quantize it. So it comes in. Again, with this one, we can ease 
EQ. Ah, it's copied the EQ because I copied the track. So uh, we can maybe take some of the high end up. In fact, we could automate that to do that. I'll put a filter on here. So we could um, show EQ for frequency automation track and just go up and down. Let's uh, colorize it red so we can discern between the track and the automation section and then draw our points and uh, go up and down. Yes, very cinematic. Again, we'll do it with the uh, with the previous filter. So you, you can see why I colorize these in red. So you can see easily on screen what you've done um, automation wise. Otherwise they can disappear with the tracks, the lighter colors. So red is a good color. I tend to use red for system commands like compressors and subs and things. Yes, let's try it. And to make it more interesting, we could, instead of it rising and falling with the uh, bass, we can have it rising and falling between these troughs, so it rises when that uh, lowers. Okay. sure the length is okay. I always quantize to make sure that it's um, on the bar, on the beat. Some of these prob probably aren't. I'll need to go through and check them later. So, um, and we can go back and rename this. All these tracks, we can rename them later. cinematic. Um, well, check your time. So we're up to 3 minutes 42 already. Um, I think we need to add some more parts or have a key change. So let's have a look at uh, maybe a melody to go closer to the end. Let's, um, the easiest way to do this is <laughs> to select those and then loop that. Right, so let's, um, let's lower the size of the automation lane. It's, it's getting in the way. You can still see that they're there, but uh, they're not annoyingly large. In fact, all the... Go for two rows, that's better. And... Let's add another instance of HZ. Okay. 
Whoa. What's happening? Right. Um, there we go. Sorry. I need to colorize things because it's all looking the same. Uh, so we had automatic queue before. So that was that one. Let's try a new preset. Go into the Dark Zebra bank and let's go through. Okay, that sounds very familiar. So let's change the sequence to something less well known. in there. Again, we don't need to hold it for the entire time. We can just get it in time, quantize, get the length we want. Which is four bars, and then that's five bars. So that's four bars. Right. Let's see. And the D just stands for duplication, so it means you've duplicated the track. Just the EQ on that, and uh, again, another great tip is to duplicate your tracks, and then you get the previous tracks EQ duplicated too. So sometimes it just works. I think that's good. You don't want that high frequency, and you can cut the low right out. So we could go up to 600. And then it's just peeking through and not being a frequency hog, which is the worst thing. 
some other elements now let's try um some drum elements so i have uh, just some random a selection of random things in this multi in contact and we can uh, have a listen We want to make sure it's in the right key, so this will change everything when this comes in. Um, let's go here and see if we can record. It's just little loops in a multi, and then you can drop these in any way you like. That's, I tend to use a lot of little loops. So I've got a hard drive full of lips and just great sounds um sometimes they just work so let's see if these do i'm getting a bit of uh my process is overloading because i'm using the screen capture software and I possibly need to um, change the uh, buffer, but we'll see if we can just record some. I think it's a buffer issue, so we'll change the buffer. And um, the control panel at the lowest possible. So let's go up to ten twenty, ten twenty four. It be more of a delay on the mic, but. Uh, that should work. Yes. Okay, so uh, are we in the right key? Mm -hmm. Should be now. Use a spot, drop it in. Let's drop it in around here. So, as I said before, the secret to fast writing is to just always be moving forward, always be adding things, never go back to the beginning and listen to it all the way through because that's a complete waste of time. You can do that when you're finishing it and you'll have plenty of time to listen to it all the way through. When you're writing, just get things down, just get things moving. Let's uh, put some of these down. This little bunch, we just need to put it in time for quantization. Uh, it's easier to hit Q if you have it set up. I have Q set up for quantize, and then if you're recording slightly out, you should just go to the closest um, setting. So 
that's too far over. But it makes life easier. Just to use Q to tighten things up. Right. So let's um, solo that. Um, the drums with the bass and see how it works. Yeah, I think it needs to come in where the bass comes in. Uh, I'll lose that and just... So the bass comes in there. Too early. Let's uh, have that done. Mm. Drop it out. Then have it coming back in. Um. Okay. Let's have everything in. to come to the end of this live stream and we will come back and revisit this piece and or take away some more things put it into a nice order and you know hopefully have a finished piece at the end and um, then I'll put it out there on either on Spotify or YouTube as a video uh, yes, so, okay, that's the end of this live stream. Uh, join me on the next one, and we will continue where we left off and finish this piece and see if we can make it sound really good. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.